Let's go. Good morning. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. This is David Steele and I am sitting in Red Thunder. I'm at Barstow. I've only got 150 miles to go today. This is part of a much longer trip. But I decided I wasn't going to share all of this with you because uh, a lot of it is... I'm experimenting with a new engine and transmission mod. Let's just do a quick check of Red Thunder. Yep. She's warming up. I should turn the wipers on. So what are we doing today? Well, we are carrying 46,000 pounds of milk. That is a reasonably heavy load, but we're doing something else with this too. Let's turn on the lights, put ourselves in gear, check that everything is good. Not a particularly nice looking mo motel this, but I needed to sleep and uh, there we go. Anyway, so Today's sound is coming from Zmods. I'm using Zmods Big Cam Sound. But the engine, that's something else. That's something else completely different. I just maneuvered through this hotel parking lot. A little bit about this uh, about the sound then. Well, uh, the Zmods Big Cam is a, a payware mod. It's worth it. Zmods does great sound. This engine, well, I modeled it off some of the heavy duty pickup trucks. This, uh, the headline performance numbers are taken from the Ford Power Stroke. Now, I know that's a eight cylinder, and this is just a six cylinder sound. That's okay, it works for me. But we have 925 foot pounds of torque. Okay, I'm gonna clear that. I don't know where I'm going and 400 horsepower but its power delivery is that little bit different to I'm not going to hit this curb oh, I think I am yeah let me, uh, let me back up here if it lets me which I think it will where was I yeah so we have 400 horsepower here but only 925 foot pounds of torque. Now that's not too dissimilar from some of the older school engines. But its power delivery is that little different. Peak torque is around about the 1500 RPM. I think it's 1500 to 1700 I've set it at. Again, not too dissimilar to some of the older style engines. And full power is available pretty high up in the rev range. It may even be 3000 RPM. For a transmission, I thought this Volvo was turning right, but never mind. For a transmission, I'm using uh, my own custom automatic. It's a seven-speed. I should tell people where I'm going. That's where engine's almost up to temperature. With a, a 4.29 final drive, so it's it's kind of short geared, and uh, I'm still prototyping the the engine speeds to get a match to the transmission. The idea here is that the uh, transmission and the engine are, are a package. Uh -huh. I'm not going to get the chance to go anytime soon. So in that respect, not too dissimilar to some of the 2020 give or take um, era pickup trucks for the North American market. Though obviously this is a much bigger pickup truck. And I'm in everyone's way. Maybe I'll just let the truck creep forward a little bit. That might encourage someone to let me out. Not yet. Is that a gap appearing? Nope. I forget the name of the traffic mod that I'm using, but uh, it tunes the traffic. Hey, here's a gap. Tunes the traffic so that it's it's busier when you would expect and quieter when when you would expect, and that that does make a difference. It makes it quite immersive. We should have given it some right luck sooner. Well, my engine's almost up to normal temperatures, so I could give it a bit more beans, but. Right, we're on the way. 
So by setting up the engine and looking at the shift points and the transmission, the idea here is that I can get the most from the engine and transmission without it being too compromised. Sometimes the, the mods I try on Steam Workshop have still been raining. The, the shift points are just not working. saying I will put this in the Steam Workshop, but I want it to be functional. And he won't quite shift up into top or seventh gear at 55, but I can manually prompt that. That's not a big deal. Will it? No. Let's position it to go into top. There we go. The other thing with using an engine derived from a pickup is I've set the capacity to be quite low. This one I'm modeling on a, a 6 litre. It's the smallest that American trucks have made to will let you use. Does this make a difference to the game? Yes, it makes a difference to the engine brake. Gives the engine less inertia. Um, this guy's going slowly. So it tends to pick up or reduce the engine speed that much quicker. You're going to use the right lane, buddy. Do I have to try and go up your inside? I'll try it. I'm just concerned he's going to pull in front of me. I think I'm good now. So it does make a difference to how, how the game works. Your engine revs rise quicker with a smaller capacity engine. Your engine brake is based on the capacity of the engine. The sound too. Okay. So you see there my instantaneous economy figure of uh, well, under load 5.6, 5.4. When I come off the load, it will rise dramatically. The big advantage to having a small capacity engine is theoretical fuel consumption is that much less. Especially when idle. I'm pleased to say that other factors are at play. So the amount of uh, power or torque that the engine is producing is, is the biggest factor. So the problem you may have with a, a, a low power power plant like this, spend a lot of time with the engine under load, which means a lot of fuel burn. So far, 400 horses has been a reasonable compromise. speed. Now I've set it to not change down until it's about 1100 RPM, maybe 1000 RPM. Taking some inspiration from some of the, the older Mac engines there, where their, their power band was considered to be like 1100 to 2100 RPM. Because this one will rev that much higher. I'm tempted to downshift it but I'm going to let it so I'll let it do it itself. I'm using a torque converter score of 1.5, which I'm not entirely sure how effective that is. What that actually does. I've tried changing the numbers there. I've gone from 1.5 to 5.0. Does it make a difference? Well, it may do when you're driving bobtail, but drive Bob Town. Shift it up to 7th. As for economy, 6 is okay. I would have gotten probably more from uh, an MX-13 with similar power. Would it have been as much fun? Depends how you define fun, really. Still. This is where I hope to make up some of the economy. So the power completely, the mileage goes up because it's not burning diesel. This truck looks like a Lone Star is coming up the left lane. Oh, it's kind of fast to take that corner. The retarder's going to kick in and keep my speed under control.
so far so good. And coming into Bakersfield, I uh, try and manage the the power such that as you start to descend into the city, you can be off the power completely and you kind of coast in. So quite a bit of fuel, but also makes it easier because that line on the outskirts of Baker, Baker Bakersfield on the east side always seems to be red for me. This guy is uh, not hanging around. Yeah, so. I left it too late. I'm off the power, but I'm going to have to use the engine brake. Okay. It will shift down for me, which is good. Effective engine brake as well. I told it to only give me a, a standard engine brake for six liters. Goodness me, it's green. I'll never last. Right? Yep, called it. Okay. Let's inch up next to this guy and ask him what he's running. Is it a girl? That's a guy. Morning, Gav. What are you running? Nothing. <sighs> okay. Probably doesn't want to be social then. That's fair enough. Look at the detail on the on the tire there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Well, I guess I'll put the other window down off the parking brake now because we're about to move off. That's a 2000, that's good. Pretty quick shifting up. I'm not going to try and uh, race off the lights here. He's in a hurry, he's got way more power than me. Cruise to 30, see how the engines, the demand on the engines is much higher from the cruise than I was. That's pretty so I manually forced the shift up into six there. Lights it onto red, so it's left off completely. Go straight on. A little bit of service brakes. A little bit of engine brake. Wow, well, that was kind of aggressive. We'll coast up to a stop. That's interesting. It loses speed very quickly, but then it trickles itself forward. And as it creeps, I guess creep mode on the tra automatic transmission. Hmm. I might not need to stop, and that would be useful. Yes, that's very useful. Saves quite a bit of fuel not having to stop. Now, I did originally set this engine up with um, not that much torque low down to figure that that would be reflective and the torque converter would compensate, but it really wasn't. So moving off, you've got, you, you start off, I guess, in a manual, the, the, the clutch goes in, and then you stumble across a flat spot the size of the Netherlands or Holland. You seemingly have almost no acceleration. And that was bad driving Bobtail. With 46,000 pounds behind me, I would not have been able to get going come to a slight gradient up the hill, that'd be it, you, you just not move. So I polish the, the low down torque quite a bit, so that it produces a measurable amount of torque at 600 revs. Stay where you are, police car. Okay. Go straight on. Guess I'm not going quickly enough to argue, right? Let's tap up to 45, I'll be joining the freeway in a little bit if I slip to 35, no point in trying to get up to that speed. No one desperate to get around me behind, that's good. Cancel cruise, let the thing coast. Mirror signal, engine brake. Nice thing with engine brake is when it downshifts, can put me in the right gear for the hazard. A service brake, give some lock, a bit more brake, full lock, back on the power. I'll back off the power because we're stationary at the bottom of this on ramp. 
Where's the shoulder? Oh, I'm in everyone's way here. Hang on. There we go. Quick external view. Yeah, sorry everyone. Oh, I didn't disrupt too many people. So I can turn the lights off now. Yeah, I know why the AI does this, but it's um, it's a little frustrating. Reckons I'm not using any fuel. I don't think that's entirely the case, but. engine brake was, was helping keep our speed there, I just tapped it on. So the slowest it will go is 2 miles an hour and that's, um, what's that, 750 RPM? So it's the service brakes, off with the engine brake and I guess we'll wait here. Let's put the e-brake on. So stationary, it's using 0.4 gallons per hour in gear. Put that to neutral, it shouldn't change. No, it won't. Mm -hmm. Come on, sunshine, in your own time. There'll be a huge hold up behind us now. I'm getting close to wanting to use the shoulder. In fact, I'm going to just put it in gear. The e-brake, no one's used the shoulder there. Okay, use my left indicator. If I can, I'll always use a down slope on the on-ramp to help build up speed. Yeah. Should have just used the left leg. Oh, there you go. Empty. Alright, well, we'll see. It takes three minutes to get up to 55, but that's okay. speed to get up the hill, but if I manage this correctly, I can not end up having to stop midway along the, the hill. The brakes. Yep, there we go. The automatic really helps with this. If I'm using a manual and I don't manage my gear changes correctly, I could be going way too slow halfway up the hill for the gear that I'm in, and then I've got to change down is, which causes me to stop, sometimes roll back, and it's just messy. It's like, look out for the noob in Red Thunder. The auto makes life much easier in that regard. Or the automated manuals too. Trickle my way through here. Let it roll down this hill. 
What's my fuel? Uh, 63%. Wow, double yellow line, sir. Reducing very low end torque makes it a lot less fun than if you never stop. Or maybe your gearing's just too high in first gear. Yeah, I don't understand necessarily what I'm looking for. I know what the symptoms are, but there's lots of variables to, to play around with. Still, if I ever do a video on that, it won't be this one. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, Go ahead and click the like. If you didn't like it, you can click this like, that's okay. You can subscribe for more content. And once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.